Hello and welcome back to another fantastic episode of SGTV. Today we're going to be discussing about outdoor lighting. So seven, section 714, some of the changes that have happened in here could be monumental for some people. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, 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 we have a case uh, directly that impacted uh, the changes that were brought into BS 761 uh, as a court case, Jake. Indeed, yeah. So it's more focusing around the RCDs for outdoor lighting. It was a serious incident, uh, fatal incident, fatal uh, as, incident. It, as it were, um, when it came to um, some RCD or some lights that weren't protected by RCD. Just to give you a bit of context, the HSC have been all over this one uh, and that they are the main reason why it sort of made it into uh, 714. And the, the regulation that we sort of want to look at is 714.411.3.4. So we'll look at that in a second. Bit of background then, Tim, on, on the case yeah, yeah, uh, and what actually yeah. happened. Well, it was a young eight-year-old uh, boy who'd been playing football and his ball went over uh, the fence. And so, as any eight-year-old boy would do, climbed over the fence. It was a pub garden. It was, it was open access in that sense. And he climbed over the fence uh, and he received a fatal uh, electric shock. Dreadful tragedy, dreadful tragedy. What happened to the owners of the pub or the landlords of the pub? Okay, the, the, it was a serious case and it did go uh, to court uh, uh, and there was a manslaughter charge associated with it. Uh, the, 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 the pub wiring was in a very bad way. Uh, the landlord had used the same electrician for some years. I think it might have been a relative. Uh, but whatever, the, the, the situation in the pub was very, very serious, long-term problem. Uh, and and uh, the pub landlord got nine years uh, uh, for gross negligence manslaughter and the electrician got 12 months. Oh, so wow. very so serious. Very serious, serious case. So obviously, you know, thoughts are with the, with the families first and foremost. I know this was some time ago, but as we're covering it now, it's just a, a, a thought really to, to remind everybody that electrical safety isn't something to sort of be messed around with. And it's, it's something that we always need to, to strive for when it comes to uh, greater than the minimum standard. The book's minimum standard doesn't stop you from going on and above um, with that then. So the, the, the requirements that have changed uh, have come in for additional protection. There's a couple of examples there, although it does say the list is not exhaustive. So we've got gardens, spaces open to the public, telephone kiosks, bus shelters, advertising panels, and town plans. Town plans. Well, anything that effectively has some lights behind it that, that shine out. So you're walking around town, you're a tourist, you go up, you see a, a, a plan on the wall, and you start poking at it saying, where am I? Okay. So, so there, suddenly any bits of exposed metalwork, well, you suddenly got a potential life path, haven't yep. you? And, 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 and so it, it, it's included in the list. Uh, and it, it is a, it's a shall. So it's not a recommended, it's a shall. So this it has to be done. And as you say rightly, Jake, the, the, the example is, is a, a four list, uh, uh, four items in the list, but the list should be added to where it's relevant. Well, it's interesting though, Tim, because I, I, I want to pick this up really, because they've gone not exhaustive on the list. Then they've said that there's some stuff that's excluded. Yeah. So you've got street lighting, traffic signage, illumination of monuments, platform lighting at rail slash bus stations. Yeah. So they've included telephone kiosks, yeah. but not bus stations. Yeah. Where else would we particularly see it then if the list is not exhaustive? I'm really pushing you now. I, know, I want to apologise. I know, I know. That's probably why as a committee you, 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 you find that you couldn't think of anything else and so you weren't, it's not exhaustive and, and if it fits, <laughs> if the cap fits, wear it. It's, it's very difficult being put on the spot thinking about those things. I can imagine situations where you would walk up and you go, I wonder if. Well, if you're in that place where you think, I wonder if. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Because in the end, no eight-year-old uh, boy's life's worth, worth not doing it for, for, a, for a few pounds here and there, is it? So the reason why street lighting and traffic signage is excluded is because there are separate regulations associated with street lighting. Correct. And so you, you go to that place to deal with, with those things. Uh, uh, the same with traffic signage. There's, it sits separately. Uh, illumination of monuments. Um, it's because it's of a peculiar nature. And so it's specialized lighting. It's not general lighting. There's been a whole design process associated with, with the lighting of monuments in that way. And so it's a different way of looking at it. This is general lighting accessible to the public 
and, and it's trying to catch almost the inadvertent missing I, I, of I can, protection. I can see why they would sort of move monuments to the other side of the fence. Um, for example, generally speaking, um, you would see maybe some fencing and sort of some cordon off of, of, uh, of these monuments. We just refer back to that, that though, Tim. The guys, the, the young boys climbed the fence. Yeah, yeah. Would, would this be something that they maybe look at in the future? I, I, whether as a committee we look at it uh, or not, it's almost immaterial. As a designer, if you're designing for this, you're going to think about the nature of RCD protection, whether it's necessary or relevant. Not because it complies with, with 714 411.3.4, but because you want to go, well, actually, somebody could gain access, something could go wrong, and in the light of that, yeah, I'm going to stick a 30 million pound CD on because uh, in terms of the cost, again, we're back to it. It's pennies in effect. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I've certainly learned going around the country, delivering um, talks to uh, consultants and specifiers and bits and bobs like that. They use this book yeah. and they normally stick to it. They don't yeah. sort of design outside of the, the scope of this, which is interesting. I find I do find it a little bit baffling, really, to be honest, because... They're meant to be the experts. They're meant to be the people that are designing these systems to ensure electrical safety. Yet, we've got something like this where illumination of monuments could go on, on and above. Yeah. I think, I think I, I, it could be in terms of that. But, it, but again, I think if you've got control of the environment, then you can deal with things differently. And I think that's where I would see uh, that indent six uh, in that list. It's, it's because you've got control of the environment Whereas in the other, you're actually inviting people into to, 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 to come into contact with the electrical uh, lighting arrangements. The platform lighting at rail and bus stations, it's back to, if you like, there's other bits of regulation and, and, and stuff dealing particularly with railways that may be a different. It may be worse. I'm not saying it's necessarily better, but at the moment, they're excluded. It's definitely uh, bigger issues at, at rail than than. Uh, and, and RCDs, yeah. isn't there? Definitely, especially with the signaling side of things, which we don't know too much more about. But there we are. So that's additional protection for, for, for outdoor lighting. Be sure that if you are doing any, you are making sure that you are conforming to the regulations. And if you think that in your design, when it comes to the places that are excluded, are likely to be in, come into contact with someone from the general public, then you can design on and above what the requirements are. And if you feel fit uh, to, to include that, then then do so. Anything else you want to add on this, Tim, before we sort of wrap it up? No, I think I think uh, we're, we're, we're fairly much covered in terms of outdoor lighting installations. The other side of things, of course, is you could always choose a, uh, some form of lighting that doesn't have any exposed metalwork on. That is very true. That's one of the things that we sort of probably didn't pick up on is the class one, class two, two setup. You could certainly think about it in those terms as a designer, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that's uh, brightened your day up. It's certainly uh, brightened <laughs> ours up. Stay tuned for more of these sorts of videos. Myself and Tim are going to be bringing you lots of good content coming out of there. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share on the SGTV platform. We'll see you again soon.